I've got something going on with my shoe. My heel keeps killing me. I have no idea what's going on. I and mean, I'm walking around on my toes all the time. I'm tall enough. I don't need to be any taller. So uh, today, I'm going to go see Dr. Marshall, see if we can't get this taken care of. Luckily enough, we're joined once again by friend of the show, Director of Sports Medicine at Children's Health Care of Atlanta, David Marshall, and his son Grant. Guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Today we move on to Seaver disease. Mm -hmm. What is Seaver disease? Is it named after Tom Seaver? No, unfortunately it's spelled a little different. This is, this is Seaver's disease or Seaver's condition named after Dr. Seaver, I believe way back about 50, 60 years ago. And what Dr. Seaver did is he figured out that there's a growth plate in the back of the heel called the calcaneus, and that growth plate serves as an anchor point for the, for the calf muscle and Achilles tendon. And in young kids between the ages of seven and 12, that pre-adolescent age, that growth plate is very active. And if they happen to happen to play a sport involving a lot of running or jumping, then through repetitive pulling and traction on that calf muscle and Achilles tendon, they get little tiny microscopic cracks in that growth plate. I heard a lot about growth plate injuries. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's something you deal with a lot. Why don't you show us where this particular growth plate yeah, is? Yeah, down here in the in the calcaneus, which is a, the long name for the heel bone. I think of the calcaneus as as being shaped like half of a tennis ball. If you take a tennis ball and slice it in half and take half of the ball and cup it over the heel, that's the growth plate. So these kids really can have pain anywhere from the very top of the heel all the way down to the other side, on the inside, and it can even go all the way around to the, to the outside. Uh, most of the kids that I see have most of their pain on the inside of the heel, right around where I have these, have these blue stripes. And it's because when you run and jump and play sports, you typically plant and cut and you, and you put a lot more pressure on the inside of your heel more so than the outside. Another contributing factor is flat feet. A lot of the kids that I see that have Seaver's condition pronate, or when they stand up, their arches collapse a little bit, and that just puts a little more pressure on the inside edge of that growth plate. You said that flat feet were a problem that you think we need to talk about more. Would you mind coming back at a later date and we could actually sit down and talk about That's something that a lot of people think, a lot of people think about right, is flat I, feet. Right. I think, I think the feet tend to be the, the most neglected uh, joint in sports. All too often kids come in complaining of shin pain, knee pain, even hip pain and low back pain. And if you don't take their shoes and socks off and look and see where the rubber hits the road uh, and, and neglect that, then it's just like you're trying to drive your car with flat tires. You're, you're not going to perform like, like you should. So I'd be more than happy to come back and talk about remedies for flat feet. Stay tuned for the flat feet episode with the two padfoots, me and Dr. Marshall. We're done with you, buddy. We're going to go sit down and talk, all right? So let's talk about some of the symptoms of Seaver's disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first symptom is pain. After the kids come in from a workout or playing or a contest, they'll complain of pain in the, in the heels, and they're very well, well able to localize it. They won't point to the Achilles tendon. They won't point to their arch. They'll put their thumb or their finger right on the back of that heel. A lot of times, because it's the heel that hurts during that heel strike phase of walking or just putting that heel on the ground during walking and running is painful for them. So a lot of these kids that have Seaver's condition will actually walk on their toes. They'll, they'll try to be on their tiptoes to avoid putting that painful heel on the ground. So what causes this? I mean, well, what, what makes your kid end up walking on his toes? It, it's one of those growth plate conditions. You remember, the, the, right. like the ones we've talked about before, if a muscle or a tendon attaches to a a vulnerable weak growth plate it's the growth plate that fails and in Seaver's condition the culprit is the calf muscle and Achilles tendon as that muscle and Achilles comes down it tends to fan out as it grabs onto that cartilage growth plate in the heel so running and jumping and basically just just moving pulls on that calf muscle which pulls on the growth plate and it's a growth plate that gets uh, that gets injured now you told me that Grant actually had Seavers, mm -hmm. and you, you attributed part of it to his flat feet. Yes. Could you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, the, when, you, when you think of the configuration of the growth plate, I think of the, the growth plate in the heel is like half of a tennis ball. So if you take a tennis ball and slice it in half and cup it over the heel, you can see that the growth plate not only is in the back of the heel, but also on the inside and the outside. If you, if you think of a kid that pronates or that has collapsing of their arches and look at them from behind, their Achilles tendons do this. They kind of banana or bow inward because their weight is going to the inside. So just by the fact that their weight putting more pressure on the inside of the heel, and then when they run, cut, play sports, and pivot, when you plant your foot and cut, you're putting a lot more pressure on that. So pronation just puts a lot more pressure on the inside edge of that, of that heel growth plate. So would part of prevention be, as far as preventing this, to be 
to realize your kid's got flat feet and do something about that? Yeah, that's, that's a very important part. In fact, I think, I think the best way to treat an overuse injury is, is to prevent it if we can. So identifying predisposing factors such as flat feet or pronation, something that's easily correctable with a, with a simple foot orthotic or some arch support that can be purchased at a, at a local, local um, um, drugstore, sporting goods store, or podiatry office or, 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 or custom orthotic can be, can be made. Do you um, suggest that if my kid's got flat feet and he plays a lot of sports that I just go and start trying out orthotic I, implants? I do. I think if, if you're going to go, if you're going to drive to Florida on spring break and you realize you have a flat tire, you're not going to go until you put right. air in that tire. And I think we need to treat our feet the same way. Have kids look at their feet, have their doctor look at their feet during their physical. And if they prone it, if they have flat feet, clearly address that. Because not only will that help prevent injuries to the heel, also shin splints, knee pain, low back pain and hip pain have all been linked to um, not enough air pressure in their, in their tires. So as a parent, if you're just going to go to a, to a drugstore and, and buy uh, an orth, orthodontic, orthopedic, what did you call it? Orthotic. Orthotic mm -hmm. for, your, for your kid. Are you just looking for the one that's going to square him all the way up? Is yeah, that that's, that's basically what you look for. And I think it, it's okay to have, their, have your child take your shoes and socks off in, in the store and try out different types of orthotics. What you want to see is when they, when they stand in front of you, their Achilles tendon should be perfectly vertical. If they, if they still kind of roll inward or they collapse, then the orthotic isn't nearly high enough or it might not be supportive enough. And there, there's many different types of orthotics. There's, a, there's the off-the-shelf orthotic, which is like the Dr. Scholl's gel. And this is more designed for padding and cushioning and, and, and shock absorption rather than rigid support. You can go to a good running shoe company. There's a lot of them in, in Atlanta that have a semi-custom orthotic. They're going to be a little more, a little more rigid, a little more padded. Um, price goes up a little bit, anywhere from sixty to ninety dollars a pair. You might pay. And then the the the, the Mercedes Benz of orthotics is the full custom orthotic, where they can actually take a mold of your child's feet, send it to a lab, and build one from scratch. And you can pay anywhere from three hundred to six hundred dollars a pair for for those. I don't recommend that for young kids that that still have the potential to grow. Because if you spend that kind of money and get this beautiful orthotic, six months later they grow out of it, right. then you're left with a pretty expensive dog toy. <laughs> so you say the kid's walking on his toes because it hurts so much. I ask you this question every time we get together for every condition mm -hmm. we talk about. If they're, if they're on their toes, maybe I know the answer for this one already, but can he play tonight? Yeah, with, with some of these growth plates, it's a, that's a tough question because the growth plates such as Little League Elbow in, the, in, in young pitchers or Little League Shoulder, those, the answer to that question would be absolutely not. Those are the injuries that we really try to, try to uh, encourage kids not to throw because the continued injury that growth plate can have much long-term um, uh, effects such as needing surgery. Right. Where the heel growth plate, the ones we talked about in the knee, I think it's okay to let these kids play with a little bit of discomfort. Now you gotta use common sense. I tell the kids it's okay to be tough, but it's not okay to be stupid about it. If they're clearly lame, they're limping, they're getting teary-eyed, and, and, they're, and they're having swelling, then I think common sense says those kids need to rest. But if they can make it through a workout, look okay, not limp considerably, it's not terribly swollen, and they just say, yeah, my heel hurts or my knee hurts a little bit, I don't think the parents should worry about, about being labeled bad parents by letting their kids play with some minor pain. All right. Well, Doc, thank you so much. We really appreciate My it. Pleasure. Hope you come back and join us. It's going to wrap it up for us today. We're going to see you right back here next time for another great edition of Clubhouse Gas.